Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh for Yahshua. Praise Yahweh for calling Yahshua out of the land of Egypt, out of the world of sin. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father Yahweh. Thank you, Father Yahweh, for all your love and your mercy. I fell in love with a Nazarene. I fell in love with him. I fell in love with a Nazarene, and he took away my sin. He gave me beauty for ashes and world for all my pain. I fell in love with a Nazarene, and Yahshua is his name. I fell in love with a Nazarene. I fell in love with him. I fell in love with a Nazarene, and he took away my sin. He gave me beauty for ashes. Hallelujah. And joy for all my pain. I fell in love with the Nazarene. And Yahshua is his name. And Yahshua is his name. I fell in love with the Nazarene. I fell in love with him. I fell in love with the Nazarene, and he took away my sin. He gave me beauty for ashes and joy for all my pain. I fell in love with the Nazarene, and Yahshua is his name. And Yahshua is his name. And Yahshua is his name and Yahshua is his name and Yahshua is his name hallelujah 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 dear heavenly father Yahweh we come before your presence to thank you to love you to praise you for all that you've done, for all that you do. In the name of Yahshua the Messiah, thank you for your keeping power. We magnify your name. We thank you, Father, for what you do and how you do what you do. We know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we condemn. In the name of Yahshua the Messiah, we thank you, Father Yahweh, for your keeping power. Thank you for sending Yahshua to be the substitute for our sin. Father, he died on that tree, shedding his blood, which cleanses us from sin. Father, thank you for allowing us and showing us the need to repent, to confess our sins, and to turn from every wicked way. Father, we thank you for the stripes that Yahshua received upon his back, which heal us from every sickness and disease. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you what you do. We thank you for how you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We praise you and thank you, Father, for what you have done, for what you are doing, and for what you shall do in the lives of all your people. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Greetings to you, hallelujah, from the congregation of Yahweh. I'm Apostle Haniah, or Pastor Beverly Gordon, however you may know me, I say shalom, shalom, shalom. I thank you for allowing me into your home. I pray that you'll get your Bibles, your pencils, and your paper, that you may follow along with this message. It's called Yahshua Meets Kung Fu. And when we think about some of the things that happen in our lives, when our lives are sinful, we are all topsy-turvy. And so my ultimate prayer is that you, hallelujah, will get your Bibles, your pencil, your paper, follow along with me. I pray that this is not your first time. And if this is your first time, I pray that you get something out of this message that will help you, hallelujah, be at the place, hallelujah, that Father Yahweh wants us to be. Listen, uh, coming up to... Uh, 
the end of 30 years, and we'll start 31 next month. But we just praise him, Father Yahweh, for all the things that he is doing. Yahshua makes Kung Fu. And my ultimate prayer is that even as you hear the words of this message, that you, by the power of Father Yahweh's spirit, will think about some things. You know, sometime when we're trying to do right, there's always somebody trying to do wickedness, and yet we want to do righteousness. Hallelujah. This verse, um, what does Kung Fu mean? What does Kung Fu mean? Kings under natural government, foolish and unwise. Kings under natural government, foolish and unwise. Yahshua meets Kung Fu. Hallelujah. As we see here, I don't know if you can read this. It says, not seeking Yahweh. So we want to look at a king who should have sought Father Yahweh, and yet he didn't. When we think of this king who did not seek Father Yahweh, then we have to recognize it is King Asa. And when we're looking at the scripture, and I'm going to give you the scriptures so that if you want to read this later, you will be able to read them. Asa... The scriptures about Asa are found in 2 Chronicles chapter 14 and chapter 16. And if we know anything about King Asa, when King Asa was, um, there was a, a group of people, and I'm not going to read all the scripture, but there were a, a, a great army that was coming against him. And Asa said the people were just too many for him to try to defeat himself. So he called on Father Yahweh. And when he called on Father Yahweh, Father Yahweh heard his prayer and uh, put that army into his hand, and he was able to defeat him. And then there was another time when King Asa was uh, coming against another group, and he sent for somebody else, some other nation to help him. So when King Asa was older and he would have, uh, instead of him seeking Father Yahweh like he did the first time, he sought somebody else. I want to read in Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 11. It says, And behold the acts of Asa, first and last. Lo, they are written in the book of kings of Yada, or Judah, or Yahuda, and Yashara, or Israel. And Asa, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet until the disease was exceeding great, and yet in the disease, he sought not to Yahweh, but to the physicians. You know, I tell people, just like the scripture says, is anyone sick? Call on the elders. Call on the elders. If you're calling on the elders and the elders know Father Yahweh, they're not going to pray the prayer of faith, and Father Yahweh is going to hear that prayer. And if that person has committed a sin, Father Yahweh will hear and that person will be forgiven of their sin. So, in the scripture, when we're talking about not seeking Father Yahweh, we want to seek Father Yahweh. We do not want to turn from Yahweh. And so, we want to do away with not seeking Father Yahweh. Hallelujah. When we read in the scripture, Yahshua makes Kung Fu... Kings who are unwise, who are foolish and unwise. In John chapter 8 and verse 19, this is what we would have read and uh, which Yahshua would have said to King Asa. John chapter 8 and verse 19. Then they said unto him, Where is your father? Yahshua answered, you neither know me nor my father. If you had known me, 
you should have known my father also. So even though Asa in the beginning sought Father Yahweh in his older age, he did not seek Father Yahweh. And yet we want to seek Father Yahweh for all the things that Father Yahweh says that he will do for us because when we seek him, the things that we have need of, he will do them for us. In Matthew chapter 10, these are the words that we shall read, even concerning Yahshua. It says, in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1, it says, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So King Asa, listen, if he was living during Yahshua's time, he would have been healed from that, those sicknesses. And verse 8, it says, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you receive, freely give. We want to realize that we must look to Yahshua, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, who healed us from every sickness and disease. Listen, pride, pride. I don't know if you can read these. We had a little mishap today. <laughs> but anyway, uh, when you really think about what the scripture says, in the book of Daniel, when we read about Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, and all the different things that happen, you know, um, we have to recognize that Father Yahweh does some things for us that no man can do. And yet, in his pride, these are the things that he said. We want to go to Daniel chapter 4, verse 28. Daniel chapter 4, verse 28. It says, All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar, and at the end of 12 months he walked in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then the king spoke and said, it's not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might, of my power, and for the honor of my majesty. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from you. When we recognize that he is taking pride. He has pride. And yet we have to recognize that Father Yahweh is the one who does these different things for us. And even as we are looking in the scripture, Yahshua makes Kung Fu. We want to recognize that Yahshua would have told him something that he truly needed to know instead of patting himself on the chest or patting itself on the back. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 23. It's, this is what it says. I mean Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10 and verse 23. Mark chapter 10 and verse 23. It says, And Yahshua looked round about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar, he's thinking about all the things that he has, but because he was rich, he didn't build the kingdom. Father Yahweh is the one who allows us to get wealth. And so here he's having such great pride and, and, and doting on himself. But listen, we have to thank Father Yahweh for everything that we have. And so even in Proverbs chapter 16, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18, these are the words that we would read. Proverbs 16, verse 18, it says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. And so we don't want to have pride in ourselves because if we have pride in ourselves, then we are going to think more highly than what we ought to, not recognizing that anything that we have truly comes from Father Yahweh. So in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16, this is what we read. It says, For all that is in the world, whoops, 
the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Away with pride. Kung Fu is not for us. We don't want to have foolishness and unwiseness. We want to be a wise people. Hallelujah. Idolatry. I hope you can read these. Idolatry. Idolatry. When we think about some of the things that Father Yahweh's word tells us that we as a people all over the world have done and some of the things that Father Yahweh is calling us not to do, we want to be at the place of doing things in the manner that Father Yahweh has told us to do them. If we know who King Jeroboam, Jeroboam is, we want to recognize that in 1 Kings chapter 12, and we're going to read 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 32 and uh, 33. And this is what it says. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month on the 15th day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Yada or Judah, and he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel, and <coughs> the 15th day of the eighth month, even in the month which he devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Yasharal, and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. Now he did something. He made an image for the children of Yasharal, children of Israel, to go to Dan and Bethel to supposedly be worshiping Father Yahweh. But Father Yahweh is spirit. Anytime something is made in a, um, um, a, a material, that is an idol. And so we are not supposed to do any of those things. And yet, as we're looking at the, the scripture, we want to do a we want to do away with pride. We don't want to have pride in our hearts, in our mind, because when we do that, we are not worshiping our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Yahshua makes Kung Fu. We want to do the things that Father Yahweh is calling us to do. And even as Yahshua is meeting Kung Fu, we want to be wise. We want to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We do not want to be like the kings who are under, oops, idolatry again. This is King Ahaz. When we go to 2 Kings, I pray that you have your Bible. 2 Kings, um, matter of fact, I'm going to give you the other scripture even for the pride. Daniel chapter 4, verse 28 to 37. And here for King Ahaz in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 1 through 21. Now, we have to know that King Ahaz was a very wicked king. And even though he comes on down through our pathway, he was a very wicked king. He wanted to have the, um, the property that belonged to someone else. In 2 Kings 17, it says, and in the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Yada, Judah, began Hoshea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Yasharal nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, but not as the kings of Yasharal that were before him. Against him came up Shalemezer, king of Assyria, and Hoshea became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea, for he had sent messengers so, to so king of Egypt and brought no present to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. 
Then the king of Assyria, uh, then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went to Samaria and besieged it three years. And in the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Yashua, Israel, away into Assyria and placed them in Hala in the Haver by the river of Gothen and in the cities of the Medes. For so it was that the children of Yashua had sinned had sinned against Yahweh, their father, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared of the deity. In other words, hmm, if you read in another place, uh, the children, of our four, some of our foreparents, family members long, long ago, instead of them serving Father Yahweh only, they also made them some idolatrous images. Anyway, it says in verse 8 of 2 Kings 17, And walked in the statutes of the heathen whom Yahweh cast out from before the children of Yasharal and of the kings of Yasharal, which they had made. And the children of Yasharal did secretly those things that were not right against Yahweh their father and they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fence city. Now so anytime that they are making um, uh, altars, there's only supposed to be one altar. When they're making their own altars that means they are doing idolatry and when they're doing idolatry that's not right. Verse 10, and they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places as did the heathen whom Yahweh carried away before them and did wicked things to provoke Yahweh to anger. For they served idols whereof Yahweh had said unto them, you shall not do this thing. When Father Yahweh says, do not make any graven images, do not serve them, do not bow down to them, that is just what he means. He said, yet Yahweh testified against Joshua and against Yada by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, turn you from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but harden their necks like the neck of their fathers that did not believe in Yahweh their father. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he had made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom Yahweh had charged them that they should not do the like. And they left all the commandments of Yahweh their father and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worship all the hosts of heaven and serve Baal. And they called their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divinations and, and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger. Therefore, Yahweh was very angry with Yahshua, Israel, and removed them from out of this sight. And there was none left but the tribe of Yada only. Also, Yada kept not the commandments of Yahweh their father, but walked in the statutes of Yahshua, which they made, and Yahweh rejected the seed of Yahshua and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of our sight. That's why we're in America now. It says, For he rent Yahshua from the house of David, the ten house tribe, he, he took away from King David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drove Yahshua from following Yahweh and made their sin a great sin. Listen, 
We don't want to do that. Away with idolatry. We don't want to do that. When Yahshua makes Kung Fu, kings under natural government, foolish and unwise, he doesn't want us as a people to be unwise before Father Yahweh because Father Yahweh is calling a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. He wants us to serve him and to serve him in the way that we are supposed to serve him and not do the things that we want to do. And so when we look at the scripture and we see what would Yahshua say concerning that idolatry. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. When we're looking at the scripture, Father Yahweh has a word. He says, Behold, I sent you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be you therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. If we're wise as, no, we're not, we're going to be wise. We're not going to make any, do any idolatry. We're going to find out Yahweh's commandments, see what he says to do, and do them in a manner that he says to do. Now, we know about King Saul. King Saul was the first uh, king who was over our people, our foreparents. And yet, when we think about some of the things that happened, King Saul what was his sin? Rebellion. Rebellion was the sin that King Saul did. And when we recognize what Father Yahweh says, he does not want us doing any idolatry. And yet as we read in 1 Samuel, we could read it, and I'm not going to read it all. 1 Samuel chapter 15, 1 through 23. And yet... The scripture that comes out from rebellion, it says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of Yahweh, he has also rejected you from being a king. When Yahshua meets Kung Fu. Kings under natural government, foolish and unwise. In John, Yachanon, chapter 14, John, chapter 14, and verse 15. These are the words of Yahshua that he would have said to King Saul had he been there during that time. He was there, but he was concealed. He was there, but he was concealed. In John chapter 14, verse 15, he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 23 and 24, this is what he says. Yahshua answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode unto him. He that loves me not keeps not my saying, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Away with idolatry. Away with idolatry and rebellion and pride. You know, when Father Yahweh is calling someone, he wants us to have faith to believe, faith to be obedient, faith to search out his word, to do the things that he's calling us to do. And if we would do those things, then we would be, look, at a good place. Listen, these next two go together. Adultery and murder. Two sins together. Matthew chapter 14. Now this is during Yahshua's time, and yet when we really think about some of the things that happen, we want to recognize when Yahshua meets Kung Fu, kings under natural government, foolish and unwise, he doesn't want his kings that are set up to serve the people of Yahweh, he doesn't want them being foolish and unwise. He wants them to do the things that Father Yahweh is calling them to do and be at the place Father Yahweh wants them to be. We know that 
as we read, and I'm going to read this, in Matthew chapter 14, verse 1 to 5, and this is what it says. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Yahshua and said unto his servants, This is John Yachanan, the immerser, or John the Baptist, as you may read, he is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on Yachanon, John, and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake for uh, his brother Philip's wife. For John had said unto him, It is not lawful for you to have her, and he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. So adultery was being done. He had his brother's wife. And as we continue to read from verse 6, it said, But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter Herodias danced before him and pleased Herod. Wherefore, he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she should ask. Oh, don't make any vows without hearing what they're going to ask you. Do not make a promise without knowing what the end of the, the question is. It says, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she being before him, be, being before instructed of her mother said, Give me here, give me here, John the Immerser's head in a charger. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, for the oath's sake and for them which sat with him at meat or at the meal, he commanded it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John, Yachanon, in the prison. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel. And she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Yahshua. Verse 13. When Yahshua heard of it, he departed from there by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people heard thereof, they followed him on foot. So we have to say, so what would Yahshua say concerning the things which Herod had done? Concerning, the, when you really look at the scripture and see that Yahshua, the son of Yahweh, never broke one of Father Yahweh's commandments. And yet as you look in Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 through 28, this is what he said. You have heard that it said of you, of them of old time, you shall not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looked on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Just to look on her. In old covenant times, you actually had to do the act. But since Yahshua has come, he said, oops. If you're coveting or lusting or you got pride, the sin is already committed. So don't lust after a woman because then you're, uh, that person would have been committing adultery in their heart. And in Mark chapter 3, verse 4, I pray that you're reading with me. Mark chapter 3 and verse 4. When we think about some of the things that Yahshua would be saying to those kings who were foolish and unwise, it says, and he said unto them, it is not lawful to do, is it not lawful to do good on the Sabbath day? Or is it, is it good to do good, lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil, to save life or to kill? They wanted to murder him. And yet we know that as Herod, allowed for John's head to be uh, cut off. That was murder. We're not supposed to 
answer to those vows. We are supposed to think before somebody asks us a question and then answer that question properly. John chapter 7 and verse 19 concerning murder. John chapter 7 and verse 19. It says, did not Moshe give you the law, yet none of you keeps it? Why do you go about to kill me? They wanted to kill Yahshua, and yet he's saying, you know, if they had Father Yahweh's laws, then they wouldn't be doing anything wrong. Yahshua meets Kung Fu, kings under natural government, foolish and unwise. Foolish and unwise. When, when our lives are in a dither, we're just doing all kinds of things, then we have to think about what happens in our life. When we think about this other king, King Ahab, oops, King Ahab, 1 Kings chapter 21. 1 Kings chapter 21. I pray that you are people who are reading Father Yahweh's word, looking at all the things that are happening, and then realizing that as people are doing many things in this world that are contrary, we have to recognize the king, uh, king Ahab had a covetous spirit. He wanted um, the man's um, uh, farm, Na uh, Naboth. And I'm going to read just a few verses. It says, And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. And Ahab spoke unto Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give you for it a better vineyard than it, or if it had seemed good to you, I would give you the worth of it in money. And Naboth said unto Ahab, Yahweh forbid it that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto you. Listen, if we had have an inheritance, it belongs to us, and we're supposed to pass it down to our children. And Naboth said unto uh, Ahab, Yahweh forbid it that I should give, it, give the inheritance of my fathers unto you. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. But Jezebel, Isabel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is your spirit so sad that you eat no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spoke unto Naboth, the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me your vineyard and for money, or else, if it please you, I will give you another vineyard for it, and he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Does, Do you not govern the kingdom of Yahshua? Listen, you know, the kings are over everything. But listen, Father Yahweh wants them to do righteousness. He said, Do you not govern the kingdom of Israel, Yahshua? Arise and eat bread. And let your heart be uh, merry. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in the city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people and set two men, sons of Belial, wicked men, before him to bear witness against him, saying, uh-oh, not only does he have covet, I mean, uh, that not only is he coveting, but here goes Isabel uh, lying. 
It said, to bear witness against him, saying, you did blaspheme Yahweh, the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of the city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants of his city, did as Isabel had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which he which she had sent unto them. And they proclaimed the fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, wicked men, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme Yahweh and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones, Oops, that he died. Then they sent to Isabel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. Now it came to pass when Isabel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Isabel said to Ahab, Arise, take the possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelites, to take possession of it. And the word of Yahweh came to Eliah the Tishbite, saying, Arise and go down and meet Ahab, king of Israel, that which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, where he is gone down to possess it. And you shall speak unto him, saying, now listen, when people do covetousness and murder and lying and cheating, all kinds of things happen. This is what he said. And you shall speak unto him, saying, thus said Yahweh, have you killed and also taken possession? And you shall speak unto him, saying, thus said Yahweh, in the place where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall the dogs lick your blood even time. Even yours, brother. Listen. Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived, Yahweh is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. And Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found you because you have sold yourself to work evil in the sight of Yahweh. Behold, I will bring evil upon you, and I will take away your posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisses against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Yahshua, and will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha, Baasha, the son of Ahiah, for the provocation wherewith you have provoked me to anger and made Yahshua to sin. And uh, Isabel also spoke Yahweh, saying, The dog shall eat Isabel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dies at Ahab in the city, the dogs shall eat, and him that dies in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of Yahweh, whom Isabel, his wife, stirred up, and he did very abomination in following idols according to all that he did. The Amorites, whom Yahweh cast out before the children of Yahshua, and it came to pass when Ahab heard these words, that he tore or rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. And the word of Yahweh came to Eliah the Tishbite, saying, See you how Ahab humbles himself before me. Because he humbles himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house covetousness covetousness and when we think about what father Yahweh says in exodus chapter 20 i'm praying that you know as we have been here at this tv station sharing these words over almost well 
will be closing out and starting 31 years in uh, next month for the restoration message. We're in the 26th year of the um, word of Yahweh and the scriptures of Yahweh about 21 years. And yet when we think about what Father Yahweh's word, when he gave the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, 20, 17, he said, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his house, nor his manservant, maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything is your neighbor's. We're not supposed to covet. And when we think about what Father Yahweh uh, says through Yahshua, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Anything that we have need, need of, not those things that we just want, he will give to us. And yet, we say to, we say, to cover this away. Sometimes it doesn't want to go away. But listen, unbelief. King Agrippa, in Acts chapter 26, when uh, Shaul was telling him some of the things that happened, and in, when we look at the scripture, King Agrippa said, to Shaul, he said, you almost made me be a believer, a believer, because he was getting ready to believe the things that Shaul had spoken. And yet when we really think about some of these things, and I'm going to read to you um, from verse 26, Shaul was speaking. He said, for the king knows of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in the corner. Verse 27 of Acts 26. King Agrippa believed you, the prophets. I know that you believe. You know, when the prophets were speaking and telling what Father Yahweh wanted us as a people to do, the kings had to have the scriptures written, which would show some of the things that King um, Apostle Saul was telling to King Agrippa. And um, then King Agrippa said unto Shaul, Almost you persuade me to be a believer. And Shaul said, I would to Yahweh that not only you, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except for being in chains. They had him bound up. And yet, we want no, we don't want to be unbelievers. We want to have faith to believe. When we think about Yahshua meeting Kung Fu, Yahshua meeting a king under natural government, foolish and unwise. In Luke chapter 7 and verse 50, this is what we read. Luke chapter 7 and verse 50. And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. He would have told, he would have told King Agrippa, your faith have saved you. But King Agrippa had unbelief. Please read Acts chapter 26, verse 1 to 32. Away with unbelief. And last but not least, when we're looking at the scripture, we're talking about ignorance. When we think about Balaam and Balak, King Balak wanted Balaam to go and curse Yashua. Listen, and, and Father Yahweh gave Balaam some instructions. And yet, as you're looking at the scripture, we have to go to numbers because when we're looking and seeing all the things that Father Yahweh is doing for us as a people and realizing how Father Yahweh put his blessing on us as a people, and yet he, for those who would bless us, they would be blessed. For those who would curse us, they would be cursed. So when we read, in Numbers chapter 22, verse 31 to 35, this is what we read. Then Yahweh opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of Yahweh standing in the way. 
and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of Yahweh said unto him, Wherefore have you smitten your donkey, your ass, these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand you, because your way is perverse before me. And, and the donkey saw me and turned from me these three times, unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain you and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of Yahweh, I have sinned, for I knew not that you, with, that you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease you, I will get me back again. And the angel of Yahweh said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto you shall you speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. You know, um, Balak, King Balak, wanted Balaam to uh, curse Yahshua. He wanted the, our people to be cursed. And yet, he said, he found out that you can't curse someone that's blessed by Father Yahweh. And so, when we're looking at the scripture, we want to read Father Yahweh's word. We want to see what his word does say. We want to recognize that all these things that have, that have been written in the 80 books of the Bible that Father Yahweh has given, we want to be obedient to them. And you may only have 66, but read that 66, because those 66 books show us the things that are going to happen. And if we are doing what Father Yahweh said to do, then we, as a people, will be at the place that he wants us to be. And if we're not going to be at that place, then guess what? In ignorance, ignorance, some things will come upon us and overtake us. And look, when Yahshua meets Kung Fu, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10, this is what it says. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of Yahweh. You might see the kingdom of heaven, but Yahweh's kingdom is, it's, it's, even though Yahweh's in heaven, the kingdom is coming down onto the earth. So, even though in ignorance, um, Balak, King Balak, wanted Balaam to curse Joshua. But I say, away with ignorance. Father Yahweh wants us to be wise, wise. He wants us to gain wisdom. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of understanding. The fear of Yahweh, listen, is knowledge. We need wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We don't want to walk in foolishness and unwiseness. Father Yahweh wants us to be a people who would do the things that Father Yahweh is calling us to. Yahshua spoke the words of Father Yahweh, and he wants us not to be kings under natural government, foolish and unwise. He wants us to be people of wisdom. Seek Yahweh while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. But seek you first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all the things you have need of, he will add to you. Need, not want, need need. He will give you your needs. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches in the kingdom through Yahshua Hamashiach, his son, our savior, our master, and our soon coming king. We praise Father Yahweh for what he does, how he opens up our eyes, allows us to hear, allows us to receive his word, and as we are obedient to the commandments that he has given us, he blesses us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. We want to continue to do those things that need to be done. And, you know, if we do what he says to do, he will bless us. He will bless us. He will bless us. 
We're blessed, 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 we're Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Yahweh. Seek you first the kingdom of Yahweh and all his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, way. Hallelujah. I thank you for allowing me into your home. I thank the staff here at PCTV for helping me with this program, and I thank them for all the many things that have been done over the course of these years. We praise Yahweh in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, his son, thanking him for calling us, Yashara out of the land of Egypt, out of the world of sin, and allowing our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our spirit to receive his truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.